Honorable Member of Parliament, Honorable Minister of State representing the Government of Canada, Members of the Diplomatic and Counselor Corps, Dear Genocide Survivors, Distinguished Guests, on behalf of Humura, Canadian Association of Rwanda Genocide Survivors, and on behalf of the High Commission of the Republic of Rwanda to Canada, it's a great honor to welcome you to this official opening ceremony of the 20th commemoration of the 1994 genocide against the Tutsi in Rwanda. It's a day where we remember 100 days of darkness, 100 days of mass killing, 100 days where everybody were on television without doing anything It's a day that we remember like it was yesterday. Thank you. Your presence here at the ceremony is again a sign of your solidarity to the genocide victims and to the genocide survivors. We start this ceremony with the national anthems. Please welcome Deborah Ikirezi to perform Canadian anthems. Thank you. Oh, Canada, terre de nos aïeux, ton front est saint de fleurs en Car ton bras s'est porté les pays, il s'est porté la croix. Ton histoire est une épopée des plus brillants exploits. God keep our land. Glorious and free, oh Canada, we stand on guard for thee, oh Canada, we stand on guard for thee. 
Thank you, Deborah. For, uh, pour la l'hymne national du Rwanda, uh, je voudrais inviter Denise Moutoni. Reka tu kura te tu kuvu gibi gui wa wutu bumbi e hamget kwe sabanyarwa duko wa tu pia ye ver wa sujira sinjis gui te ka komezi mi higor guanda dukunda. Tuha guru chie kukwi tanjira Gwa mahora sabe muwa gutuye Wishire wiza nemuri vjose Urangwe nisha kuteri mbere uhamnyu muwa ano na mahanga yose Mazisha borja haweri kuhijambo Et merci de, Denise. Et maintenant, nous allons écouter euh, la Konomise. Il va être présenté par euh, Monsieur Orin Kerr. Is uh, his representative of the Sons of Scotland. Pipes and drums. Please welcome Mr. Orin Kier. Thank you. Après euh, les sons de cornemuse, nous allons observer une minute de silence. La minute que je vous recommande de prendre, ce n'est pas seulement pour nous rappeler la date d'aujourd'hui, c'est plus pour nous rappeler les personnes, nos familles, nos voisins. We're going to take one minute of silence. People, they remember the day as a date. It's not a date on a calendar. We want you here, survivors, friends of survivors. You know someone in your family. You know someone who is neighbor, who is a colleague, who lost his family or his friends, just take some names and remember them. Don't remember the date of the calendar. Just remember some names 
and that what we call remembrance. Please take that moment. Thank you. Thank you. Après euh, ce petit moment de, de recueillement, je voudrais inviter le président de l'association Oumura. Honorable Lynn Yelich, ministre d'État. Honorable Paul Duar, député d'Ottawa, centre représentant du groupe parlementaire multipartite pour la prévention du génocide et autre crime contre l'humanité. Excellence Madame Shakila Omutoni, chargée d'affaires de la République du Rwanda à Ottawa. Excellence ambassadeurs, chers représentants de la communauté juive, Monsieur Jonathan Friedman, distingués invités, chers survivantes et survivants du génocide perpétré contre les Tutsis du Rwanda de 1994. Il y a 20 ans, nos mères, nos pères, nos frères et sœurs, les membres des familles élargies, nos amis et nos voisins ont été atrocement massacrés pour être nés Tutsis. Dans une folie meurtrière, dans le monde en, dont le monde entier a suivi dans une indifférence totale. Les survivantes et survivants, dont certains sont présents ici parmi nous, doivent la vie à la seule grâce de Dieu. Car le plan conçu par l'élite extrémiste Hutu au pouvoir et exécuté par l'armée, la gendarmerie, la milice Inherahamne et une bonne partie de la population Hutu prévoyaient l'extermination totale de tous les Tutsis du pays. La machine médiatique et administrative mise en place pour se faire appeler la population a n'épargné ni femme ni enfant. Les radios de la mort étaient à l'œuvre et les grandes puissances, les seules capables de brouiller les ondes émettrices de la haine, ne l'ont pas fait, prétextant la protection de la liberté d'expression. Il fallait plutôt évacuer leurs retentissants sans tarder nous laissant seuls face aux forces de la mort, certains d'entre eux tenteront de nier l'évidence, d'autres diront qu'ils ne sont pas là, qu'ils ne sont pas les gendarmes du monde. Et pour d'autres encore, le génocide était une, était une chose normale dans ce pays-là. Twenty years are a time of almost a generation. For us, however, it is as it's yesterday. The sad memories of our loved ones are continuously present in our heart and our thought. The only passage of time for those of us who were very young at the time, can be seen through our comings of age. We have become adult, but in spite of our tireless efforts to gradually move away from the traumatizing past. 
our wounds remain fresh and so are our tears 20 years after. The genocide has changed our very existence and we do not see the world the same way. But we know also that the 1994 genocide against Tutsi of Rwanda is part of our collective conscience. You are here in solidarity with the survivors and we thank you for being present as we pay tribute to our families, friends and compatriots brutally and uh, systematically wiped out by the ideology of hate. Nous saisissons de cette occasion pour remercier toutes les Canadiennes et tous les Canadiens de la solidarité qui nous témoigne depuis 20 ans. Ce n'est pas pour rien que le Canada, notre nouvelle patrie, abrite la plus grande communauté des survivants en Amérique du Nord. Non seulement ils offrent la meilleure qualité de la vie au monde, mais également il a su sentir nos besoins et nous apporter soutien et consolation. En matière de mémoire, le Parlement canadien a voté en 2004 la motion FESA le 7 avril, une journée de commémoration des victimes du génocide contre les Tutsis du Rwanda de 1994. En 2008, le 7 avril, a été votée journée de réflexion sur la, présence, sur la prévention du génocide. En matière de justice, le Parlement a voté la loi sur le crime du génocide, les crimes contre l'humanité et les crimes de guerre. C'est en vertu de cette loi que des procès ont été intentés contre des présumés génocidaires établis en sol canadien en exprimant notre appréciation pour ces initiatives louables, y compris la décision de déporter Léo Mugesela pour faire face à la justice de son pays. Nous souhaitons que cet effort de justice se poursuive et que tous les présumés génocidaires vivant au Canada répondent de leurs actes. Aujourd'hui, 20 ans après, nous réitérons nos remerciements envers un éminent citoyen canadien qui, aux heures sombres de notre pays, le Rwanda, a refusé de tourner le dos Malgré les ordres donnés par ses chefs à New York, nous saluons son courage et celui de ses camarades qui ont fait le choix difficile et dont certains ont payé le prix de leur vie. Votre témoignage, mon général, en tant que témoin crédible, et privilégié a été pour beaucoup de reconnaissance du génocide dont nous commémorons ces 20 ans. Comme le disait le pasteur Martin Luther King, à la fin, nous nous souviendrons non pas des mots de nos ennemis, mais du silence de nos amis. En ce qui vous concerne, 
nous souviendrons de votre courage dans l'adversité et de votre désobéissance positive. Our thought today are uh, also with those men and the women, Rondis and foreigners alike, who those words, actions, behavior and attitude during the critical times in 1994 opposed the genocide ideology or took a risk of saving pretend lives. They are our heroes. For unlike us, they had a choice to make and they choose humanity. Honorable député, excellence, madame, messieurs, aujourd'hui, nous nous souvenons car nous avons l'obligation de garder intacte la mémoire des nôtres. Au cours de 20 ans écoulés, s'est développé un courant négationniste et révisionniste extrêmement organisé et aux proportions alarmantes qui nie, relativise ou minimise le crime avec un effet cruel sur les victimes. Ce sont des individus, des groupes et des pays qui tentent de transformer les victimes en bourreaux et vice-versa. Nous faisons appel à vous et à la communauté internationale en général pour que vous nous aidiez à contrer ces tentatives malsaines et fondamentalement dangereuses, non seulement pour les victimes, mais pour l'humanité. Aujourd'hui, 20 ans, Pensons à fait et surtout aux survivantes et aux survivants, aux prises avec des séquelles du génocide. Les veuves du génocide vivant seules, les femmes victimes de viols collectifs et porteuses du VIH, depuis 20 ans, les orphelins sans moyens, sans moyens de survie quotidienne. 20 ans après, ils ont toujours cruellement besoin de votre soutien. Depuis plusieurs années, l'association Humura, qui représente les survivantes et survivants du génocide commis contre les Tutsis du Rwanda de 1994, dans la région de Tawagatino, se veut partenaire, partenaire avec tous ceux et celles qui voudraient soutenir les survivants dans leur lutte pour la survie. Nous espérons poursuivre cet effort ensemble. Au nom de survivantes et survivants du génocide commis contre les Tutsis du Rwanda, je vous invite à être des nôtres dans toutes les activités commémoratives organisées dans la région et dont le programme figure sur le site web de Humura, humura.ca. Et au nom de Humura, je vous remercie infiniment de m'avoir prêter attention et de transmettre mon message à toute personne de bonne volonté et que Dieu vous bénisse. Merci. Thank you so much. Après euh, le message euh, du président de Rumura, euh, qui vient de nous donner en grande ligne euh, son message et 
la situation dans laquelle vivent les rescapés. Je voudrais inviter l'honorable Port Duar, membre du Parlement, représentant le groupe parlementaire multipartite pour la prévention du génocide et autres crimes contre l'humanité. S'il vous plaît, veuillez accueillir Port Duar. Merci. Merci à tous et toutes. Aujourd'hui, nous sommes ici pour une commémoration très, très triste. Mais, comme le président dit, c'est une journée pour une mémoire pour toutes les victimes, mais aussi pour le crime contre toute la famille humaine, pour toute la humanité, parce que c'est un crime contre toute la famille de le monde. We stand today, as the president said, not just to commemorate the victims, as we should, and their memories, but to understand this was a crime against the human family. And we must today recommit to the prevention of genocide and crimes against humanity. And I know it's difficult to comprehend what happened 20 years ago. I want to share with you a story 20 years ago. Many of us Canadians might not remember exactly where we were 20 years ago. I do. And ironically, I was in a classroom listening to the radio and was listening to the actions that then would follow of the genocide that continued on. And how many of us remember exactly where we were on 9-11? We all remember that for good reason. But many of us weren't aware of what was happening at the time. And there were warnings. And I say it was ironic I was listening to the radio because that's exactly the method the genocideers used as a tool to implement this genocide. And I remember trying to explain to my students what was happening because I couldn't fully comprehend in the days that passed after and could not understand why the world wasn't acting. It does seem like yesterday. And so many of you who were touched by it individually and collectively are still healing. I want to acknowledge your suffering. I want to acknowledge your pain. And I want to say that we collectively need to work to help deal with that. And let me also say the following. It is so important that we deal with the issue of impunity. Because at the core of peace for any society is justice. There can be no real peace without justice, and there is no justice as long as there is impunity. So we must be resolute, and we must bring perpetrators to justice, and we must ensure that the victims know that we are there for them in this struggle for justice and to deal with the issue of impunity. I'm glad to be here with my colleagues from the Senate and the Minister of State, members of the Jewish community, and all of us together as a community, because if there's one message I think we can all get behind is to say that the genocide that happened 20 years ago was something we promised would never happen again and yet it keeps happening. And I don't know how to explain it to my children, but what I do know is that we understand that when people use language to isolate people based on ethnicity, those are the warnings. And as Barbara Coloroso said, genocide is a form, it starts off as bullying. It's language, and then they use methods of violence to finish it off. Let us be resolute in our vigilance. Let us commemorate this day to bring peace to those who have suffered, but resolute in our cause to not just say never again as a slogan, 
but to say that we will be sure to look for prevention of genocide so we can actually act and not be bystanders and bystanders who show that we are guilty in our bystanding. Merci beaucoup. C'est un très honneur pour moi aujourd'hui de participer dans cette occasion. Merci encore. Euh, merci beaucoup. Après ce message de solidarité, after that message of never again, I would like to invite Mr. Jonathan Friedman, representative of the Jewish community in Ottawa. Thank you very much. Minister, members of parliament, Rwandan High Commissioner, dignitaries, survivors. In a few days, Jews throughout the world will celebrate the festival of Passover, marking the end of our Egyptian slavery and journey to freedom. While a joyous holiday, its central message is to remember where we came from and what we had to endure. The imperative to relate that story to our children, to pass on our heritage, represents the very essence of our Jewish holiday. Remembrance and resolve have been core characteristics of the Jewish people ever since. Out of the ashes of the Holocaust, we, together with decent people and decent countries around the globe, expressed a universal declaration of never again. Never again would a people, any people, be the victims of wholesale slaughter. Never again would the international community stand impotently aside while acts of genocide were perpetrated against innocent victims. Yet today, as we mark the 20th anniversary of the horrors that took place in Rwanda, we must acknowledge that we did indeed fail. But today we renew the pledge. We reaffirm the collective promise of never again and we do so as your brothers and sisters, sharing in your pain, firm in our resolve. We will remember and we will teach. We will teach so that the promise of never again can become the international bat battle cry against tyranny and violence, so that your children and mine will know such horrors no more. Together we will remember, together we will heal, and together we will repair the world. Thank you. Uh, merci beaucoup, uh, Monsieur Jonathan Friedman. Uh, our next guest is the Honorable Lynn Yelich, Minister of State, Foreign Affairs and Consular representing the government of Canada at the ceremony. Thank you. Thank you, merci beaucoup, Madame Chard de Fer, dear members of the Canadian Association of Rwandan Genocide Survivors, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for welcoming me today to commemorate with you the 20th anniversary of the 1994 genocide in Rwanda. I commend the Canadian Association of Rwanda Genocide Survivors, the High Commission of Rwanda for organizing this event this afternoon and to pay our respect to all the Rwandans who fell victim to these atrocities to honor their memory, to support those who have survived and have for the last 20 years worked to rebuild their lives, their communities and their country. Commemorating this tragedy remains highly significant year after year this day provides an opportunity for Rwandans, Canadians, and the entire international community to reflect upon the lessons learned since the genocide and to recall the importance of the fight against genocide, ethnic cleansing, war crimes, and crimes against humanity. We must never allow such horrific crimes to be forgotten or repeated. 
It is for this reminder that Canada designated April 7th as the National Day of Reflection on the Prevention of Genocide. We wish to acknowledge the substantial work and effort Rwanda made to rebuild a country after the genocide and to find a new place in the world. Rwanda is currently a member of the UN Security Council. Rwandan soldiers participate in disproportionately high numbers in UN and African Union missions to protect civilians in armed conflict around the world, in South Sudan, in Haiti, in Somalia, and most recently in the troubled Central African Republic. There is great potential for Rwanda to provide leadership on many issues and many and great potential to advance peace, security, regionally and globally. Over the past 20 years, Rwanda has taken major steps towards reconciliation and reconstruction, and we recognize the considerable effort made through this process to bridge the divide created by the hundreds of thousands that were killed 20 years ago. These horrific events affected all Rwandans, maybe not equally, but significantly, and it's difficult to pinpoint exactly when a reconciliation process has been completed. Healing takes time. That is why our government, under the leadership of Prime Minister Stephen Harper, continues to encourage Rwanda to further develop its democratic space and to ensure freedom of association, freedom of the press, to ensure of association and freedom of the press, to ensure that the voices of all Rwandans are heard in the decision-making process in their country. Societies that respect diversity, that protect human rights, and hold perpetrators legally accountable are much less likely to suffer atrocities. Canada was proud to support Rwanda's democratic development, notably through the Department of Foreign Affairs, Trade and Development, and the support for rural development and local governance. This speaks to the 50 years since our country's established relations, as well as the strong links between our peoples. We are proud that Canada helped found the National University of Rwanda, and the Canadians are again contributing this time to the creation of the new University of Rwanda. We remember all those who fell victim to the genocide. We remember those, and we pay tribute to their memory. Let me conclude this speech on a note of hope. Thousands of Rwandans in Canada have helped in developing a better Canadian society through their work and social development. They also participate in consolidating Canada-Rwanda relations and contribute to Canada and Rwanda's influence in the world. As a result of our countries, the important people-to-people -people ties, we are gathered to commemorate the victims of the genocide, but also to send a strong message that together we remain engaged, engaged to prevent and to fight genocide. Thank you. Merci beaucoup. Merci beaucoup, honorable. Après ce message euh, du représentant du gouvernement du Canada, je voudrais inviter la chargée d'affaires the of High Commission of the Republic of Rwanda, Mrs. Shakila Mutoni. Thank you. Honorable um, Lynn Yelich, Minister of State, Foreign Affairs and Consular, Canadian Government, Honorable Senators, Honorable members of parliament, excellencies, high commissioners and ambassadors, members of the diplomatic corps, friends of Rwanda gathered here, fellow Rwandans, especially survivors, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much. Thank you very, very much for being with us today as we remember our families, friends, all brutally killed for being Tutsi. 
This is a clear testimony of your solidarity with the Rwandan people. This morning in Rwanda and worldwide, we officially started the 20th commemoration of the genocide against Tutsi in Rwanda. And the mourning period will last 100 days till July. We are gathered here to remember the tragedy that befell our, our country 20 years ago. We are also here to show support, solidarity, and care to the survivors of the 1994 genocide against Tutsi. They have worked through their wounds to rebuild their lives and are still struggling to live with the sad reality of the memory of the last 20 years as they carry on. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, the theme for this year's commemoration is Remember, Unite, Renew. This, this theme was carefully selected with the aim to remember the people murdered in Rwanda, to draw inspiration from the ability of the Rwandan people to unite and reconcile, and to marvel at their determination to renew their country. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, in 1994, Rwanda became suddenly known to the world, unfortunately, not because of any good reason, but because it has become the scene of the last genocide in the 20th century. Rwanda lost one million people and their bodies thrown everywhere. Hunted, hundreds of thousands became orphaned, widows, widowers, disabled, etc. Almost the entire surviving population became internally displaced. Most of the genocide perpetrators were made refugees in neighboring countries. The entire population were traumatized. All socioeconomic infrastructures were destroyed. State institutions collapsed. Most people have lost hope of recreating the Rwandan nation. The genocide against Tutsi was a direct result of the divide and rule policies of the colonial masters unfortunately pursued and perfected by the Rwandan post-independence corrupt leaders. A loss, of, a loss of culture and human values, bad governance, selfish leadership has led to the tragedy that destroyed our country. Back then, local officials and government-sponsored media, radio stations and newspapers called on ordinary people to murder their neighbors, relatives, friends, co-workers, only because they were Tutsi. The latter and some moderate Hutu were systematically slaughtered by Hutu extremists. It's only in July 1994, when the Rwandan Patriotic Front took control of the country, that the genocide stopped. After the genocide, we had to restore the security and unity of Rwandans. Orphans and widows needed protection. The sick, wounded, and traumatized needed special attention. We had to get the economy back on its feet. We had to rebuild schools, hospitals, and other infrastructures. In addition, we had to restore the justice system and end the culture of impunity. In short, we had to start the country afresh. Some thought Rwanda would never be a viable country again because all reconstruction effort had to start from scratch. Slowly, the country has made great strides to enhance unity and reconciliation among its people, as well as profound developments to promote the, the reconstruction process of the nation. For almost a non-existent state in 1994, Rwanda has become a nation of hope, prosperity, and equal opportunity for its people. Rwanda is today a stable country. The economy has grown at over 8% per year over the last decade. The infrastructure has been rebuilt and further expanded across the country. The infrastructure our people have gained necessary capacity building in key sectors. There is universal access to education, healthcare, and basic social protection are available to each citizen. 
Rwanda is one of the countries on track to achieve almost all the United Nations Millennium Development Goals by 2015 deadlines. Different sections of the Rwandan society, the youth, women, disabled, civil society and religious groups have assumed and play an active role in the process of rebuilding the country. Women have come at the forefront of nation building with a women representation in parliament of over 60%, the largest in the world. The above achievements are a result of a remarkable leadership clear vision and the resilience and determination of our people. Thanks also to our partners and friends for their contribution in our efforts of nation building and I take this opportunity to also uh, recognize the contribution of the Canadian government. Our work of national, national reconstruction is ongoing. We have much more to do to build a middle income nation that offers its citizens more and greater opportunities. This remembrance period is an, an opportunity to reflect on the past 20 years and to turn our attention to the challenges that lie ahead. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, as we remember the genocide against Tutsi, we must ensure that what happened in Rwanda never happened again anywhere else in the world. The international community had failed Rwanda in its time of greatest need. Today, we must all resolve to give a meaning to the world never again. Rwanda has embarked in many peace building missions across the African continent as a contribution to ensure that across, uh, across the African continent as a contribution to ensure that lives are, prever are preserved and human dignity is valued. In conclusion, ladies and gentlemen, let us learn from the Rwandan experience and ensure no other country suffers the silence and the indifference of the international community. We will all agree that the genocide in Rwanda did not catch the international community unaware. Indeed, there was a clear series of early warnings that should have triggered a serious and urgent response to a looming catastrophe. There was sufficient information in possession of those who had the power as well as, well as the international responsibility to act, yet they failed to do so. Allow me finally to quote His Excellency President Paul Kagame, and I quote, we cannot turn back, uh, uh, we cannot turn back the clock, nor can we undo the harm caused but we have the power to determine the future and to ensure that what happened never happens again. Thank you very much for your attention. Merci beaucoup pour ce message. Euh, après euh, les différents messages et, et mots de circonstance, euh, je voudrais inviter Deborah Kirezi pour euh, nous chanter le Amazing Grace. Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. was lost but now I'm found was blind but now I see t'was grace that taught my heart to fear and grace my fears relieved how precious did that grace appear the hour I first be 
believed My chains are gone I've been set free My God, my Savior Has ransomed me And like a flood His mercy reigns Unending love Amazing grace The Lord has promised good to me his words my heart secures he will my shield and portion be as long as life endures my chains are gone i've been set free my god my savior has ransomed me and like a flood his mercy reigns unending love amazing grace
leave just for to take this moment and to to think about those who perished during those hundred days. I know that we took that time for to take the work in remembrance, but I think we didn't have time for to take that reflection. The and I would like just for just one minute. Again, take that time and remember couple names, just real names. I know that at least you know at least one or two or three, but take that moment and remember after 20 years you will see that sometimes you you you, you remember only the, the, the last name you don't remember the, the first name it's an exercise but you see that to remember is a master you must do that we have to remember those who left those who perished because they were born to see that's it they, they killed them and today we are here we are alive we don't have to forget them honorable Paul Duar said never again it's a message it's a it's a word but the action is something else I think we are here together for two show that solidarity we have here our, fam our, our friends we have here member of parliaments some they, they were busy by the left but you still see some faces here they came here just for to show that they are with us ils sont ils sont venus pour nous montrer que ils compatissent que ils sont toujours avec nous. En cette journée, nous avons eu des messages qui proviennent euh, de différentes euh, organisations et instances, euh, soit gouvernementales et même euh, des ONG privées. Paul Duval m'a dit qu'il a donné aujourd'hui une motion et on devrait euh, la voir euh, cet après-midi quand on va commencer la, la conférence. On aura l'occasion de, de vous la lire, excusez. Et pour le moment, euh, les messages que nous avons eus, euh, j'ai ici deux messages. Le premier message vient de l'honorable Thomas Milker, le député de Outremont. Je voudrais inviter euh, Dieu Donné pour venir euh, vous le lire. Au nom de Thomas Milker, Dear friends, today, Rwandans and people of conscience around the world mark the 20th anniversary of the genocide carried out against the Tutsi people of Rwanda. On behalf of Canada's New Democrats, I extend heartfelt sympathy on this somber anniversary. As we reflect on this sad chapter of human history, which must never be forgotten, we also strengthen our resolve to act against intolerance, racism, and hatred of any kind. New Democrats are proud of our history of standing in solidarity with those who flee persecution and seek justice. I would also like to recognize the Humura Association for its dedication to honoring the memories of those who live whose lives were tragically cut short. I commend you to undertake this difficult but important work to pursue justice and support survivors in Canada and Rwanda who are living through the aftermath of such unspeakable trauma. Sincerely, Thomas Milker. Merci de donner. 
là où nous nous trouvons euh, présentement, la ville d'Ottawa nous a accompagnés dans ces moments difficiles depuis plusieurs années. Comme vous le savez, à chaque année, on a euh, ce privilège d'avoir la salle de conférence qui nous est dédiée gratuitement et je voudrais euh, vous demander d'applaudir de, la ville d'Ottawa. Même dans ces moments euh, difficiles, le maire nous a envoyé un message, M. Watson, et je voudrais demander à Alphonse euh, de venir euh, vous présenter le message. Merci. This is the, uh... The message from uh, Mayor Watson. Um, he said like this: On behalf of members of Ottawa CA Council, I want to welcome all those assembled here today to remember the victims of and survivors of uh, the 1994 Donan genocide against Tutsi in Rwanda. Today, it is particularly important that we gather together to commemorate the 20th anniversary of this human tragedy and to observe, to observe, to observe, to observe it as a solemn day of reflection following the decision by the, by the Canadian Parliament in 2004 to declare April 7 as a day of remembrance of the victims of the 1994 genocide against Tutsi in Iran. I'm just it, was, it, is, it is right to run on genocide, but I have to, to, no, I have to say that this is the genocide perpetrated against Tutsi in Iran. It should be reminded, reminded like that. Uh, he said, Aujourd'hui, il est particulièrement important de nous réunir pour rappeler le 20e anniversaire de cette grande tragédie humaine et d'en faire une journée de réflexion après la décision du Parlement canadien prise en 2004 qui a déclaré le 7 avril une journée de commémoration des victimes du génocide contre les Tutsis du Rwanda. Le 7 avril 2008 nous rappelle également que le Parlement canadien a adopté à l'unanimité la résolution désignant le 7 avril une journée de réflexion pour la prévention du génocide. I want to thank Rwanda, Canada and the Humour Association for their efforts to promote peace, harmony and the respect for human rights in Rwanda, as well as initiatives which support a pluralist society for the Rwandese people. On behalf of members of our city council, we offer our thoughts and prayers today to the survivors and the victims of the Rwanda people. But this is the Rwanda genocide survivors. Rwanda genocide against shooting. So this is how it should be read. This is uh, signed by Jim Watson, Mayor of Ottawa.